Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. Now, I've been using Sony's E-mount cameras for more than seven years. My first E-mount camera was the NEX7, which was a crop sensor E-mount camera that preceded the Alpha A6000 uh, series cameras. Uh, I then started using the full frame uh, E-mount cameras, which was the A7 and A7R. And these were launched with three full frame lenses. Things have changed since that time. We now have uh, a big range of E-mount lenses that we can use for full frame and uh, the crop sensors, uh, APS-C sensors as well. Now I'm holding one of the original three lenses that uh, were launched with the original A7 and A7R cameras. It's the 55 f one8 it's a Zeiss design lens. Now I've got no reason to upgrade this lens. This is pin sharp and this is probably going to serve me for as long as I use E-mount cameras. There is an old saying that uh, goes that uh, we date our cameras, they come and go. But uh, if we choose wisely, we marry our lenses. And I've got uh, no hesitation in thinking that I might uh, own this lens for life. I've got no reason to upgrade this particular lens. Now, um, uh, interestingly, now that we've got both full frame E-mount and uh, crop sensor E-mount, uh, Sony uh, differentiate uh, the lenses designed for each of those by saying FE, which is full frame E-mount, or just E for E-mount. Now these lenses, or the alpha mount, or the E-mount, is also shared by their pro camcorders. Here, the large camera on my right here is the FS7 Mark II. Now this also uses uh, the E-mount system. So there's nothing stopping me from putting any lens that I own on this pro camcorder. For instance, we could take the little 1650 power zoom, the kit lens that comes with the A6000, and I could use it as a power zoom on this FS7 Mark II. So I'm not uh, encouraging everybody to go and rush out and buy one of these pro camcorders, but if you were hiring one for a day, you don't need to worry about what lenses you're gonna use because you already own E-mount lenses. Now, the, uh, the E-mount lens that often accompanies this, uh, this Pro camcorder is something like this. It's an 18 to 110 f4, constant f4 aperture. It's got a power zoom, very smooth power zoom, and we can de-click the aperture so we can slide exposure. Um, so it, it's a great lens to use, but there's nothing actually stopping me from using this power zoom on my A6000 series cameras or my full frame um, mirrorless cameras or using it on the, on the camcorders themselves. Now I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Uh, some people have uh, suggested that you should really only put crop sensors on crop sensor cameras, full frame lenses on full frame cameras, and maybe these power zooms on the camcorders. And that for me is, um, is not a really good piece of advice because I've been mixing up uh, my lenses across different uh, 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 sensor sizes uh, for that seven year period. And, and that um, basis that I can actually move my lenses around has served me exceptionally well. Now, for instance, uh, I think actually absolutely my favorite prime lens on the A6000 series cameras is a full frame lens. It's the FE85 f1.8. It's small, it's affordable, it's light, it's fast focusing, and it's pin sharp. And there is no equivalent in the APS-C lens lineup. So this gives me exactly what I need, which uh, is the figure ground separation. I get the beautiful bokeh when I'm shooting wide open at f1.8. So uh, why wouldn't I put this full frame lens on this camera? And I've tested it against uh, some of the uh, APS-C zooms and it's as sharp perhaps even sharper. So for some people to suggest um, that is not a good idea would be poor advice in my opinion. Now, typically when I'm using my full frame cameras, I'm using full frame lenses. I've got a, a, um, a 61 megapixel A7R4 here. So I'm not gonna you be using APS-C lenses all of the time, but I do use them occasionally. For instance, uh, I've uh, come back from a landscape trip. Uh, I don't expect to encounter much wildlife. And do I take my 100-400 GM, which I would normally shoot wildlife with, or do I use the 70 to 350 APS-C lens? It's a pro quality G lens. 
It gives me excellent sharpness. It's uh, got a linear motor for fast focusing. I do have to shoot in APS-C mode, but on an A7R4 camera, it only drops to 26 megapixels. An A7R3 drops to 18. And for many people, 18 or 26 megapixels is more than enough. We only have eight megapixels on a 4K monitor, so we still have the flexibility to crop more, even if we've shot in APS-C mode. Another added advantage of shooting with this 70 to 350 on the full frame body is my buffer goes up from like 80 frames to over 300 frames that I can shoot at eight or 11 frames per second. So it has certain advantages. I'm not gonna promote that everybody does it, but if you're looking to travel light, uh, then this is an option. I often see a uh, camera such as the a7R4 as two bodies hiding in one camera body, and that is a, a very good APS-C camera and the best full frame camera. If you were in the market, uh, maybe for an APS-C camera or you own an APS-C camera and you're trying to future-proof yourself uh, for the fact that you might upgrade to a full-frame camera, or you want to use maybe the A6600 as a backup to the Alpha 7R Mark IV, then choosing your lenses wisely means that we can move the lenses across both cameras. And I have no hesitation in uh, promoting and recommending, say, the 85 1.8, um, the 55 1.8, and Sony's 35 1.8. Now these are three great wide aperture primes and they offer advantages from just shooting on say the pro quality zooms. Now I do recommend those pro quality APS-C zooms for the A6000 range cameras such as the, um, the 16-55 constant f2.8 lens which is really sharp corner to corner and also the 70-350 a fast focusing action wildlife lens. But if you were going out to buy primes, um, you may want to consider if there is a possibility that you might upgrade to a full frame camera is going for those primes. Now, there is nothing stopping me, as I said, of putting these lenses on a pro camcorder. And the lens that is actually on this pro camcorder is one of my favorite primes. It's a full frame prime. It's the 135 f 1.8 g master lens this is going to give me really shallow depth of field and uh, quite a lot of reach uh, it's going to give me the equivalent of a 200 millimeter reach on this uh, pro camcorder and so i've got no hesitation to use lenses like this on this pro camcorder these uh, G Master lenses also offer me the advantage of having an aperture ring on the lens itself and I can de-click that aperture range so I get the full benefits of being able to slide exposure very smoothly if I know the zebras are starting to move uh, either too high or too low I can just slide the exposure gradually and if I, um, I want to do a little bit of a zoom on that prime I can use the clear image zoom uh, which is a feature for all of the Sony cameras. So um, it's great that we do have that flexibility of choice. And when Sony talk about their one mount flexibility, this is actually what I'm talking about. And so if you are in the market, say, or are currently using an A6000 series cameras, please don't be put off by buying a full frame lens uh, for use. And one of the things that I have been using for um, pretty much as long as I've used these A6000 series cameras is a lens such as the um, full frame FE 70 to 200 f4. It's a fast focusing lens. It has the equivalent reach of 300 mil. And so it's an ideal lens for both the full frame if you're looking to travel a little bit lighter than say using the 2.8 G Master, also using it with an A6000 series camera. Now I'm gonna go into this in a little bit more detail by cutting to a slide deck. But um, what I would like to recommend, just so I can give you hard evidence of what I'm saying is, uh, is good advice, is either watch this in 4K 
or um, click on the link in the info selection below, um, below the movie and um, uh, start viewing the ultra high definition images that I've captured using A6000 cameras with full frame lenses, full frame cameras using APS-C lenses. And so you can see that um, there is flexibility by embracing Sony's one mount system. Okay, so let's cut to the slide deck. Let's take a look at Sony's one mount concept in a little bit more detail. And that's their one mount that is shared across their pro camcorders, their APS-C alpha cameras and their full frame alpha cameras. Now the concept is, is one lens will cross all of those systems. So if you buy um, a full frame lens, you're going to be able to use that on a pro camcorder with the alpha mount and also use it on the APS-C cameras. Now one has to ask uh, have the other camera manufacturers embraced uh, this one mount or common mount across their uh, mixed uh, sensor mount cameras and uh, Canon have two mount systems for their APS-C and full frame uh, mirrorless cameras they have the M mount for their APS-C cameras and the RF mount for their full frame cameras and the lenses cannot move between those two systems so if a Canon user upgrades from the M mount to a full frame uh, they've got a part company with their M mount lenses now I have to say that uh, uh, Canon have had this M mount for quite a number of years but in all of those years they've only managed to um, uh, release uh, eight lenses over that six year period and uh, only one of those lenses has an f1.8 aperture or wider and there are no constant uh, aperture zooms in that lineup now that's a far cry from what uh, Sony have released in their APS-C lineup we now have that constant f2.8 uh, zoom and we have the um, the long reaching fast uh, 70 to 350 and we have a range of f1.8 prime and if there is a prime that uh, is not in that range then we can uh, basically choose an FE prime and then move that over to the uh, APS-C uh, camera system. Now uh, Canon's RF mount, that's their full frame, is, is their newest kid on the block and currently at the end of 2019 we have eight uh, lenses in that lineup. Uh, obviously that will expand and grow but uh, Sony have basically um, got years of development ahead of Canon in this area. Now Nikon have also developed um, uh, a mirrorless system and they have full frame and crop sensor uh, lenses in that system. Now I have to say that uh, lens mount on their S line is quite large for that um, uh, full frame so that obviously is going to impact on any APS-C lenses they create but to date there's only two uh, and uh, there's only 10 uh, full frame lenses in their S line lineup. Same problem with Canon is their new kids to the block and they haven't yet uh, released a full lens lineup for their mirrorless systems. When we compare that to Sony, uh, we've got basically seven years of mirrorless lens uh, development there. So there are very few, if any, gaps in that lens lineup. Now, just remember, there's uh, three systems there. We've got the APS-C cameras, sometimes referred to as crop sensor cameras. You probably know them as the A6000 series cameras. We've got the full frame cameras, which have been around for seven years. And we've got their pro camcorders. Now, that's uh, an FS7 Mark II that is pictured there. But they've also got the Venice full frame um, pro camcorders as well. So, again, we've got um, full frame crop sensors, but it's they're all sharing that one E-mount system. Okay, so I did uh, remark on this earlier and that is um, uh, we date our cameras. They do come and go as uh, we chop and change them out uh, to get new features, faster AF, etc. But a well-designed lens will stand the test of time. Uh, basically, lens design or the ability to design uh, cracking lenses has been around not for years but for decades. And so if we buy carefully, we can be buying lenses for life. Now, I have released 
released a, a movie on YouTube which is about choosing your next APSC e-mount lineup. It's getting a little bit old now, so uh, uh, three of the uh, the newer uh, APSC lenses is not on the table that I'm showcasing there. But I did put some full frame lenses to basically uh, illustrate to APSC owners that um, full frame glass can actually be used on the uh, the cameras. Now Sony do denote that uh, if it's an FE lens, it's it's designed for full frame E-mount. If it's just got E or SEL, then it's just an E-mount APS-C lens. Now the three lenses that I referred to earlier are those 1.8 primes. There's also um, uh, an f2 uh, um, 28 mil lens that might take your interest as well. Now I've I highlighted these because they're small, uh, they're affordable, they're compact, so they're not they don't look out of place on those smaller APS-C cameras, and yet they deliver excellent optical performance on those APS-C sensors. Now I've used them and tested them and I am basically more than happy with the sharpness of these three particular lenses on those APS-C uh, sensors. So the question is, is, uh, is using full frame lenses on APS-C cameras okay? There has been a recent movie which is saying it's usually a bad idea but I haven't found that to be the case. So I am linking and I will now showcase some uh, images that you'll have to agree are of excellent sharpness and I don't see that there's a compromise here. And in some instances the full frame prime is sharper than a good quality zoom lens on that APS-C lens lineup. And just to highlight that is um, the 18135 APS-C lens which I tested as a very sharp lens. It does does tend to lose its corner sharpness at the wider focal length and so the 35 is not just as sharp as that uh, 18135 APS-C lens, it's actually sharper and so there is no loss and I can't see that there's any compromise by putting this particular lens and the same goes for the 55 and 85 f1.8 lenses and so um, you will be able to um, look at these uh, images or examples on my Flickr Pro account where you can um, view them at a ultra high definition. I would uh, encourage you to use a large monitor as well as ultra high definition to see that what I'm saying is um, is good. I always like people to assess image sharpness by looking at images shot out in the field, not bench tested images in some sort of studio controlled environment, but actually how we use these lenses for creative purposes. So I've been using, for instance, the uh, 70 to 200 f4g lens now there is um, a, a zoom telephoto um, now the uh, older zoom telephoto was really sharp but it it didn't have the AF legs that the 70 to 200 f4 and so I found myself switching out uh, from uh, I think it was a 55 to 10 it's a variable aperture rather than the constant f4 aperture so obviously having the wider aperture keeps the ISO lower and having the ability to fast focus uh, led me to start using that 70 to 200 uh, f4 G lens and I still recommend that lens now especially if you're looking for that wider aperture we now have a newer 70 to 350 which has an equivalent uh, full frame reach as 525 millimeters uh, and that is a significant amount of reach um, but it is a variable aperture zoom so it will be down to f6.3 at the longer reach of that lens so this 70 to 200 uh, might still be attractive for many users of the APS-C cameras now here are some of the examples uh, this was a fox a wild fox that um, I found in the Grampians uh, in uh, Victoria in Australia it's not native to Australia so uh, he was quite curious of me and uh, and stood his distance a little bit but I uh, was quite curious to see if I might drop any scraps of food now I'm going to zoom in to 1 1 here so you can actually see that uh, we do have really good definition in that fur from shooting with this 7200 and the light wasn't particularly bright so we're choosing in um, quite low ambient conditions here the last light of day 
and here again at um, slightly uh, zoomed out now I'm very very close to this kangaroo and if you can admire the uh, the focus uh, on the fur and on the eyes you'll see and probably agree with me that there is no compromise the 7200 f4g has often the often been regarded as one of um, Sony's sharpest zoom lenses and certainly it performs uh, really well on the APS-C cameras again on the a6500 in that instance and here is on the Alpha uh, 6400 camera another kangaroo shot in the wild again in low ambient conditions so really utilizing that uh, wider f4 aperture here and again um, uh, possibly with animal IAF kicking in now you'll see that the snout is slightly soft but the eyes uh, have it there really sharp and look at the fur detail on those ears there as he's listening to me uh, taking photographs of him Okay, and uh, just to showcase that this uh, lens also lends itself to uh, birds in flight. Here I'm shooting uh, Galar in uh, on the wing um, with that 7200 f/4 on an Alpha 6400. And uh, I tested and reviewed that Alpha 6400 predominantly using two full-frame lenses. The 7200 captured this uh, dog in full flight uh, uh, just off a local beach, and um, if that is not enough reach, I've even used the 100-400 GM lens to capture this particular bird, also local to me. And again, you'll see that there's excellent detail in the feather structure of the plumage of this bird here. So again, um, for people who doubt whether full-frame lenses can be used on these APS-C bodies, I personally would recommend this, and this is the evidence I'm giving you. Now, I did highlight this a little bit earlier, and it was the prime that I particularly like and enjoy using on the uh, APS-C uh, bodies and this lens uh, never stays at home whether I'm traveling with my APS-C cameras or my full frame cameras it's the 85 f1.8 um, it's not a G it's not a GM but it is pin sharp wide open and it's fast focusing it's one of Sony's more affordable primes so I would recommend it for uh, a6000 users as well as full frame users and here we have these beautiful pel pelicans uh, shot with this uh, lens and um, just to showcase again uh, anybody who would say that we lose a little bit of sharpness just take a look at the detail of the eyelashes and eyebrows of these two little girls I shot at a parade uh, in uh, Melbourne uh, there is for me no compromise here and uh, I shot um, thousands of portraits with this lens on the Alpha 6400 camera and I very very rarely if ever missed um, focus uh, with this lens on this camera and what we are getting is that figure ground separation it behaves like a 135 2.8 on a full frame and that is enough to give us that significant figure ground separation dropping the background to that smooth out of focus blur sometimes referred to as bokeh and here in the, in the in Japan um, on the uh, again the Alpha 6400 camera just isolating detail I typically shoot with this lens wide open most of the time and uh, I am getting excellent results and uh, I did some street portraiture uh, this was waiting for uh, the bullet train the Shinkansen at one of the uh, railway stations in Japan and again at a temple again it's giving me that great figure ground separation and so for me it's, it's absolutely the best prime to use on one of the APS-C cameras and then if, if this one is just a little bit long in the focal range for you then I would have a, again no hesitation in recommending the 55 1.8 and or the 35 1.8 now there are 50 and 35 1.8 lenses in the APS-C lens lineup but again if you're thinking you may be upgrading or you want the ability to um, move a lens between full frame and uh, APS-C then I have no hesitation in recommending these particular primes and of course the advantage of owning an f1.8 prime uh, which doesn't matter whether we're using full frame or crop sensor cameras is when the light gets really low uh, we can keep the um, shutter speed reasonably high uh, we can keep the ISO reasonably low and thereby shooting these uh, beautiful portraits uh, um, uh, of these uh, these guys working out 
Okay, so there is always the option to mix and match as well. Uh, I have no hesitation in recommending the new uh, G Premium Quality Zooms for APS-C users. That's the 1655G, uh, which is a, has a constant f2.8 aperture, and also the 72350. And uh, if you're wanting to future-proof yourself, I would arm myself with two or three primes, and I've listed the ones that I would lean towards here which is the 35, 55 and 85 all 1.8 primes. Obviously the benefit of using native E-mount glass rather than using any adapted glass is the focus is going to be really sound, it's going to be fast and really reliable by um, avoiding the use of uh, using any adapters when you're using other lenses from other systems. Okay, so um, here is an example of that, um, uh, the, the new 1655 f2.8 to uh, show how sharp that lens is. Uh, and really this does have corner to corner sharpness, whether we're using it uh, wide open or um, stop down. And that is something that um, uh, you know is going to be really valuable for landscape shooters uh, who are using those APS-C cameras. Now um, here I am using the 70 to 350 again on a, on a crop sensor camera, showing that this particular lens can uh, really has the ability to track uh, fast-moving subjects such as this uh, these birds in flight. And rather than just highlighting one image that I accidentally got sharp, I've got the whole sequence of images showing how sharp that is across uh, the whole flight uh, of this bird um, and. Here I am now using a full frame camera, but uh, and I've got a movie on this, which is to use full frame cameras in APS-C mode. Now, the option of discarding pixels in camera seems a little bit strange for some people, and there is absolutely no difference between cropping tighter in post or cropping in camera. But one of the advantages, obviously, of cropping in camera is we're recording less negative space that we would just throw away anyway. It brings the subject closer in the viewfinder so we can compose more easily. And we also increase the buffer capacity so we can shoot sequences of fast moving subjects such as birds in flight without worrying that the camera will slow down prematurely. So here I am shooting um, wildlife in America. I went out to shoot um, the sun rising in a landscape, uh, a, um, a close encounter with a bit of wildlife. And I can shoot rather than with uh, say one of the larger 100, 400 or 200, 600 zoom lenses, I've got I've managed to get this little 70 to 200 f4 in my messenger bag, and that obviously is uh, makes the portability and the less weight very attractive to me when I'm on my landscape shoots. Now on the a7R4, we're shooting at 26 megapixels, and that still gives me room to crop uh, even quite aggressively in post production. So I can crop down to maybe a 4K crop, uh, which is 8.3 megapixels. Doesn't matter how big your monitor is if it's a 4K monitor, there's still only 8.3 megapixels. As long as we don't crop um, and uh, throw away more megapixels, uh, there's no loss in quality by doing that crop on an APS-C crop in camera. Now here I am, If the, 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 the question is, is if I'm prepared to uh, shoot with an, um, a full frame camera in crop mode, especially the R cameras which have resolution to spare, is uh, why don't I then use an APS-C zoom? Uh, if I love the 70 to 350 so much, why don't I just use that on the A7R4? So here it is, I'm using the 70 to 350 on the A7R Mark IV. Now we have an equivalent zoom range of 105 to uh, 525. So that's more than adequate for most birds in flight, especially when I was shooting the birds in flight on the Great Barrier Reef. This is Lady Elliot Island. Now I'm still getting that 26 uh, megapixels and uh, the lens can track and so can the A7R Mark IV. So I've got this uh, beautiful uh, bird in flight here captured with that combination. 
Uh, I also I did take the uh, the full frame 200 600 G lens when I was reviewing the A92, uh, but I also decided uh, just to see how well this uh, lens would perform on very rapidly moving subjects. And these motorcycles are um, in excess of 100 miles per hour even in the corners. So um, I'm shooting with the uh, the 70 to 350 on the A7R Mark IV, uh, just showing that this lens um, is sharp enough and it can indeed uh, track rapidly moving subjects. I also tried it on the A92 and this is really really sharp but we don't have so much croppability uh, when shooting um, on the A92. We are going to sh uh, drop to 10 megapixels when shooting in APS-C mode on these 24 megapixel full frame sensors. So, but it's sharp, and uh, so if we uh, we don't need to crop too much, then again I have no hesitation in using um, this APS-C sensor um, uh, lens on the full frame cameras. Now uh, I've I've done this little bit of a, a hybrid um, package here just to show you that if you were looking to travel maybe in a messenger bag rather than a backpack but you were going full frame then you could mix and match you could use those premium quality um, uh, zoom lenses from the APS-C range with a couple of um, uh, full frame primes there. And by doing that, it is possible to pack down into a messenger bag. Here I'm including the weight of the bag itself and also all of the uh, the straps and the clips and also a small carbon fiber tripod. And the whole thing is coming in at under six kilos. Now, not everybody's gonna to want to do this. I'm just highlighting that this is an option for some photographers. So um, now this brings me over to um, uh, the, the, what, another part of the equation that uh, uh, we have another system that also shares that amount. Now not everybody is going to be buying into one of these uh, pro um, camcorders. This is the FS7 uh, Mark II. Now this is, um, this is absolutely a great uh, movie camera. Um, and the sort of lens that you might hire if you're just looking to hire this to shoot maybe a movie clip for some friends or occasional job that you're doing the let the sort of lens you might um, hire with this is the uh, is this uh, 18 to 110 constant f4 APS-C lens uh, we can de-click the aperture so we can um, uh, slide the exposure if we need to it's got a really smooth and progressive uh, power zoom there if we need to zoom in and out and obviously the constant f4 aperture maintains exposure throughout that but uh, all, uh, I do have to need to highlight that um, that uh, um, cine lens will uh, go onto my full frame and crop sensor cameras if I need the advantage of using that type of cine lens to shoot 4K movies on either my APS-C or full frame alpha cameras. Um, I have to highlight the fact that a lot of people have been waiting for an A7S3 uh, camera for a lot of a long time now, and the sort of features they're waiting for is high frame rate, high bit depth, 4K movies, and this has actually been around and available uh, on these Pro Cam quarters for quite some time. And so here, here are some of the figures: uh, 60 frames per second, 600 megabytes uh, per second, uh, 10 bit 422. And the advantage of uh, maybe hiring one of these cameras, it also has built-in ND filters and pro quality audio all as part of that package. So all of those uh, features are the sort of things that people have been hanging out to appear in a yet to be announced A7S3 camera. But we have it available now. And if we do need to move any of our uh, lenses over to that uh, system, uh, we have the advantage any alpha e-mount lens that we already own can be used on this pro camcorder here just uh, it's slightly perverse that i do this but here is the kit 1650 lens that you might get with an a6000 and the power zoom works flawlessly on this pro camcorder Perhaps a more logical lens to use uh, on on one of these cameras uh, is if uh, we've already got that uh, 18 110 constant f4 zoom is maybe to use one of our wide aperture primes. 
such as the E50 f1.8 uh, lens which will give us that shallow depth of field and here it is uh, mounted on the FS7 Mark II. Maybe another wide um, aperture uh, option is a uh, lens such as the 24 f1.4 GM. This time it's a full frame working on a crop sensor pro camcorder. There are also full frame uh, pro camcorders available as well. One of the advantages of using one of these uh, G Master Primes is we do have an aperture ring on the lens itself and we can de-click um, these lenses. So again, just like the Pro Cine lenses, we can slide the exposure working with focus peaking and zebras to get the optimum uh, quality when we're shooting movies. Now one of my favourite prime lenses uh, on the full frame cameras is the 135 f1.8 G Master lens. I really love the ability that it um, allows the subject to pop from the background with um, premium quality uh, out of focus areas there. And you can see this gives a very distinctive look. But how good is it that uh, we can um, transfer this look uh, that we're getting from this G Master lens just by popping it on um, a one of the uh, pro camcorders here uh, and that is a, a great advantage of this one mount system so Sony's one mount it certainly has its advantages and it's the it's the company that has really embraced this concept so uh, I'm Mark Gaylor Sony Imaging Ambassador leave some comments below uh, follow me uh, or subscribe and also head over to my website uh, www.markgaylor.com I've got lots of learning resources there lots of free ebooks you can make a donation if you find them incredibly useful but just head over there and uh, and see what um, what's there to support you in your alpha journey I'm Mark Gaylor Sony Imaging Ambassador